Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Nathalie Paquet, and I will be your webinar moderator today. Welcome to our Tantan webinar after the summer break. Today we will have a webinar divided in two different parts. The part one from 10 o'clock to 10.30 will present the role of the non-European observers in TCs. And the part two from 10.30 to 11 will explain the rights and obligation of the organizations that are partner for SEN and Senelec in the technical committees. Now, it's time to give the floor to our speakers today and firstly to my colleague Eric Marchand. Eric is program manager in the unit International Cooperation within CCMC. So Eric, the floor is yours. Well, good morning, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to give you a few words on the role of foreign observers in SEN and SENELEC technical committees, which has been uh, subject to a rather intense activity over the past few years within the SEN SENELEC Management Center, but also with um, many of our SEN and SENELEC technical committees and other technical bodies. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I would like to focus on our new cooperation agreement with JISC, the Japanese um, Standards Organization, uh, in which several observerships have been activated uh, over the past years. The revision of this cooperation agreement clarifies, among others, the uh, criteria for getting observer status as well as the rights and the obligations of the observers in the SEN and SENELEC technical committees. I will also explain how these observerships are assessed and what the next steps are. Uh, please note that these principles I'm going to explain here today are also valid in the context of other cooperation agreements, like the one that we signed two years ago with uh, Rostandards, the Russian national standards body. And last but not least, uh, I will also give a few words at the end of this presentation on the observerships of European experts in foreign, uh, in technical committees of foreign countries, for which uh, a new process has just been approved by the Senate and elect technical boards. But before starting this presentation, I'd like to highlight uh, that this type of technical cooperation only complements the works that are carried out at international level by ISO and IEC, as uh, we aim at facilita facilitating the discussions for the development of international standards. This is fully in line with uh, the Sen and Senelec ambitions to 2020, which gives primacy to international deliver deliverables. The reason why Sen and Senelec have established these uh, bilateral strategic partnerships with major foreign counterparts is just to promote global market access. Through these partnerships, Sen and Senelec aim at strengthening ISO and IEC's role as the leading international standardization platforms. <clears throat> um, or, however, in some cases, uh, this bilateral cooperation with our uh, partners can also respond to specific needs related to uh, the European environment, like, for example, European standards in support of uh, EU legislation, or where no international solution exists. So there is, a, there is a Japanese proverb that says, three heads are better than, than one. Okay, the English equivalent is two heads are better than one, but the Japanese say uh, three heads instead of two. Uh, maybe because uh, they like uh, to gather together big uh, delegations. Well, uh, anyway, um, there may be s several reasons why this technical cooperation takes place. Uh, this depends on the needs of... Um, the uh, observers themselves, the foreign observers, but also uh, sometimes to European needs. <clears throat> and for example, when uh, there is uh, no expertise in Europe, uh, which is only available outside the EU. Um, then there are sometimes other particular reasons why this uh, bilateral cooperation is needed. 
uh, or because sometimes uh, there is no international work ongoing and there is a mutual interest between the partners. Uh, we, in some cases, uh, this technical cooperation allows to prepare the ground for future uh, international work as well. Um, as far as the non-European needs are concerned, um, uh, this is all. The, these needs are always because the the partners want to have access to the European know-how. Uh, and be because there is an interest in adopting European standards and sometimes to influence the standards development process in Europe. Um, affiliates of SEN and SENELEC, which are from the uh, uh, um, European uh, neighborhood policy, um, of course have a specific interest in these observerships as these uh, allow to, uh, to prepare them for uh, EU accession or work towards their integration uh, in uh, the context of different association agreements with the EU. Um, in this new cooperation agreement that we signed with uh, GISC in November 2014, uh, there are specific conditions uh, under which we allow observerships. Uh, uh, the first one is, of course, there must be a cooperation agreement with uh, the partner, which details uh, all the rules that I'm going to explain a bit later in the presentation. Uh, the second condition is that the observers from the partner must represent their technical committee and not a specific company, uh, and uh, this technical committee that they represent must have uh, um, uh, a similar scope than the, um, <clears throat> the, the European Technical Committee. In some cases, the structure of the Technical Committee itself is a bit different from our structure, and so we can allow observership of a specific of, of observers representing a working group into a European um, um, Technical Committee. Then the observers must be nominated by the national standards body because we have a cooperation agreement with this body which is responsible for the rights and obligations of its observers. Uh, and I will get into more details a bit later. So it has to be nominated, they have to be nominated by a national standards body. Then there must be also an official request from that national standards body uh, of a foreign country to uh, the Sense and Elect Management Center, which will process the request according to specific, a specific procedure. Uh, and then there is this specific procedure includes uh, in a, a decision from the technical committee to be, in some cases, confirmed by uh, an endorsement from the concerned technical board. Uh, for affiliates of SEN and SENELEC, there is no need for any TC decision or BT decision. For uh, partner standardization bodies like Kazakhstan, Mongolia, or Australia, there is a need for a TC decision. And for other cooperation agreements like JISC or Russia, then there is a, a need for an endorsement from the technical board. And last but not least, whenever we received a request from, uh, uh, from a national standards body outside the EU, we analyze whether the standards that have been developed or uh, are in, in the development process are not identical to ISO and IEC standards. Because if it's the case, then we advise a partner to uh, work at international level. Uh, in the past, we had uh, already two, uh, two separate uh, cooperation agreements with JISC, one with SEN and one with SENELEC. Uh, it led to uh, some issues because they were pretty generic and, uh, and not getting into the details of the rules to be followed and so on. So this is one of the reasons why we decided in 2014 to, re to revise these cooperation agreements and have uh, a sense and elect JISC cooperation agreement. Um, we 
we we improved the the, the wordings of this uh, of this cooperation agreement, which is unfortunately not publicly available on our website, like the one with Rostandart, because the Japanese uh, did not uh, want us to put it uh, online. But anyway, uh, upon request, uh, we can of course send you uh, this cooperation agreement. Uh, first, this. One of the main improvements of this cooperation agreement is that it's, it clarifies the roles and especially the obligations of, of the observers uh, participating in our technical committees uh, in order to ensure reciprocity uh, and exchange of information between uh, the technical bodies and between the partners. We have also introduced the concept of assessment of the relevance of these observerships, which is in principle done every three years. But if there are issues uh, before the, the three-year period, then of course we address them and we try to find a solution. Uh, and there is also the possibility to end these observerships in specific situations, and I will get back to that later. We also aligned... Uh, there is also um, um, some participation fees to be paid by the partner in the case of uh, observerships. This was the case between Senelec and uh, JISC previously, but not in the case of SEN. So we decided to align these rules, which are explained in the cooperation agreement uh, itself. Uh, then, also very important is that we introduced the concept of European observerships in uh, foreign technical committees. Uh, and uh, for your information, you will see later that there is, a, there is at least one Senelec expert participating in the works of one uh, JISC technical committee. Uh, and we also uh, introduced the, uh, the, 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 sorry, we uh, also clarified uh, the structure of the Japanese technical committees, which is a bit different from, uh, from uh, the European structure and uh, which led uh, to some issues in the past. And also we introduced the uh, concept of uh, the possibility to uh, exchange standards between, uh, between SEN, SENELEC and JISC, uh, which is not a high priority at the moment because there is no specific needs that have been identified so far. Uh, so they are, the observers have some rights and some obligations. Uh, first, as far as the rights are concerned, they, once they, uh, the decision has been taken to accept observers in a technical committee, uh, the, the observers have access to all the TC documents and, and receive standing invitations to the TC meetings. They are allowed to send uh, up to three observers plus an interpreter to these meetings and also to submit comments to the working documents. Uh, something that is very important and linked to an obligation as well is that they have the right to circulate the drafts of the standards, uh, but only within their respective technical committee uh, and, of course, in accordance with uh, our sense like guide 10 on the dis dissemination, sales and copyrights of sense and like publications. As I mentioned previously, there are also obligations for the, ob the Japanese observers. The first one is to comply with the Sen and Senelec internal regulations, uh, and especially uh, even more important uh, in my view is with the Guide 10, which is very specific about uh, our cooperation with foreign partners. There is also an obligation of, uh, for these observers to report annually, and I will get uh, into much details uh, um, in the next slide. Um, as I said, uh, the Japanese uh, observers can only circulate the documents of the European TC uh, internally within the, their technical committee. Um, and also, there are two more obligations, the first one being that they have to inform the European Technical Committee of any national deviation or special national conditions in Japan during the European drafting process. And they have also to inform the Technical Committee of any new Japanese projects under the scope of the Technical Committee. Talking about reporting, uh, there are first these 
observers need to report not only to the technical committee, to the European Technical Committee, but also to the secretariats, so JISC, SEN, or SENELEC. Um, this is an annual reporting, uh, which is, of course, uh, very important for us because it enables us to first identify some potential issues. When I say us, it's Sensenec Management Center, but especially the, the, the European Technical Committee, uh, and also to, uh, to get some intelligence on what's happening uh, in Japan in this case, but in other countries as well in the, co in, in the context of other cooperation agreements. So the, the contents of the reports are very specific as well, and they should include, include first the current state of play in the sector, in this sector in Japan, as well as what's happening in the mirror technical committee, the Japanese mirror technical committees, what uh, is made of the, uh, what use is made of the standards uh, uh, at, in which the uh, to which the uh, the, the, the observers uh, have uh, access, and also we need to get information on the planning of activities within the Japanese technical committees uh, for the next year or two years or so. We have also uh, secured uh, some uh, termination. Uh, um, details in the cooperation agreement. Uh, the first reasons why this cooperation, this technical cooperation could be uh, ended, terminated, is if, of course, the uh, observership of the observers do not meet the obligations that we have imposed on them. Um, then there are some uh, other reasons that could be discussed, of course, between uh, the secretariats uh, on the consensus-based uh, um, approach. Uh, and, and if there is no consensus during the year, um, the calendar year, I would say, then uh, we take a decision during our annual secretariat meeting, which is usually in November or December. This year, it will be on the 9th of December, in Brussels uh, before, just before the regulatory dialogue meeting between the, the European Commission and METI, uh, the ministry responsible for standardization in, the, in, in Japan, uh, in which uh, SEN and SENELEC will also, and JISC will also participate. Now, at the beginning of this session, I, I told you that these rules uh, are applicable to other cooperation agreements, like uh, with uh, Russia, for example, but also these rules are applicable uh, in the case of European observership in foreign technical committees. Uh, this has been endorsed by two technical board decisions uh, in July 2015, uh, and uh, a new process detailing these rules will soon be uh, published on the SENBOS and uh, SENELEC website. Um, the rules are the same, the access rights are the same, the rights and obligations are the same, so it's exactly uh, the same. Uh, in terms of reporting as well, uh, the rules are the same, so uh, it is a really a copy-paste of uh, the rules that I've just explained to you uh, a few minutes ago. Um, also, in the case of European observerships in foreign technical committees, uh, you will see when this pro new process is available on our website that uh, there is a need for uh, technical board approval before a European request can be submitted uh, to the partner. Uh, the two main reasons for that is that first, the observers have some obligations, and second, we also have uh, observership fees to pay to the uh, to the partner. So uh, there is a financial, there are financial implications uh, of for these uh, activities. Uh, I won't get into the details on this slide, but it's just for you to know about the detailed process uh, to be followed in case there is an interest from a technical committee to observe a foreign uh, technical committee. Um, this slide shows the list of active um, um, observership uh, in JISC. There are five 
uh, European observer, uh, sorry, five Japanese observers in uh, SEN technical committees, two uh, Japanese observers in Senelec technical committees. There is also a Senelec expert who is observing uh, a JISC technical committee. And we have one uh, request from JISC in the pipeline, which should be approved in the next one month, in the next month or so. So what are the next steps? We, um, we are going to contact the technical committees uh, in which uh, uh, Japanese observers participate in order to first ask them when their next TC plenary meeting will uh, be all will be held because the observers need to report one month before this, this plenary, plenary and uh, so we need to know when these uh, Japanese observers need to report. And then we are going also to assess the level of this cooperation. So we will also send a message to the technical committee secretaries to ask them if they are satisfied with the cooperation with our uh, uh, Japanese um, um, partners and uh, we will uh, uh, eventually uh, coordinate with JISC uh, that we will meet during the IEC uh, general meeting uh, in October and also during our secretariat meeting in uh, March. Um, we will also uh, hold, and this is uh, good news I think, uh, 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 um, a presentation will make a presentation on technical cooperation with foreign partners uh, on the existing tools and opportunities uh, during the technical body seminar which will be held on the 2nd of December. Uh, so what are the key learning points uh, of this presentation? The first one uh, which was I hope uh, made very clear at the beginning of this presentation is that uh, there is no duplication with ISO and IC works and whenever works are being carried out at uh, international levels we leave it up to our partners to address the international level. Uh, this participation in technical committees is framed by specific rules and processes in terms of obligations, reporting, assessment, uh, and so on, in order to avoid any misunderstanding or issues that happened in the past. Uh, the main underlying principles behind this, uh, this uh, technical tool is the mutual interest uh, from the partners to ensure reciprocity and contribute to a trade facilitation in a spirit of transparency uh, in, in delivering uh, information. Um, this, uh, these rules are also valid for other cooperation agreements and in the case of European observerships in foreign technical committees. And should you have any question, please do not hesitate to address CCMC International Cooperation Unit and we will be happy to uh, answer your questions. Well, this is the end of my presentation. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the trip and that it enabled you to uh, better understand how to take advantage of SEN and SENELEC cooperation agreements in your technical works and for the benefits of, of course, the European industry and other stakeholders. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.